How's it going guys? Welcome back to part 2 of the Fallout 4 3D print we're doing of the Deathclaw and in this video I'll be showing you how to assemble him and give him a smooth glossy finish using XTC 3D. Let's get into it! So I printed off the pieces on my UP Mini at 200 micron layer height in black eSun ABS and to be honest they came out awesomely. I was really impressed with the quality and how easily the support pulled away. So basically I got the parts outside, I decided to clean them up by pulling the support off them and then tidying up any sort of loose rough edges. So I find for pulling the support away that the little side cutters the UPS come with work really well. So here I actually broke one of the claws off, so what I'm doing is I'm using a little bit of acetone in a dropper to pretty much weld the ABS back together. This is the technique I'm going to use to glue all the pieces together into the final model. So next I wanted to sand the faces that were going to glue together down a little bit to make sure they were really smooth and flat and there was no sort of jaggedy bits on them. So I'm just using a piece of sandpaper here, sanding in one direction only. I find this is a great way to make sure you get a nice flat surface. And yeah, so they seem to fit together quite well. So I was going to move on to the gluing. So with the glue, I've got acetone in a little dropper bottle as I said. And what I do is I put it on both faces and make sure those two faces start to melt a little bit and then I pretty much push the two pieces together and wiggle them around a little bit so to make sure there's a nice bond between the two edges and then it sets very quickly within sort of 30 seconds to a minute it's set enough that you can let go of it and move on to the next piece. So some parts joined together very well with a quite hidden seam but others unfortunately were a bit more noticeable and this is where my first mistake occurred so the dropper bottle I was using to apply the acetone had some contaminants in it unfortunately and Due to those contaminants, the edges of the parts as the glue dried went white, as you can see here. <laughs> uh, so, unfortunately I wanted to just go straight into using the XTC 3D, but that mess on his neck was just too obvious. And I don't know what was in the bottle, but as the bottle dried as well, it just started going white as well. So, a little bit frustrated. I decided to go and find some grey paint at my local disposal store. This is where my second mistake occurred. I grabbed a zinc coat, not a grey primer, and it went silver. So slightly frustrated, I decided to just hit it with some spray putty. So here it's got the yellow spray putty. And I didn't have any black spray paint unfortunately, so I just went with this. It did fill a little bit of the lines, but it also made some of them more obvious. So this is going to be a pretty serious test of the XTC 3D. So in the XTC 3D pack, you get the two parts. It's a two to one mix ratio. You get the little measuring cup and you get a small foam brush. This foam brush is a single use only. Once you use it and the epoxy sets, it becomes completely destroyed and you have to throw it away. It does not come with any gloves and you 100% need gloves and safety glasses. And I recommend a well ventilated area to be using this product. So they recommend you make a little tray out of tin foil, which is what I've done here. And you want to make sure you don't get this stuff anywhere um, or on anything. So if you're working over carpet or anything, definitely put down old newspaper and that sort of thing. Because if it touches it, it will destroy it permanently. Especially important because I live in a rental. So here I've got two pieces I'm going to try. Of course I've got the death claw, but I've also got a dinosaur head which I printed a while ago on my Wanhao i3. This print was pretty good already. It was at 150 micron, but I wanted to see just how smooth I could get it. So this is my third mistake and I was, wasn't uh, doing too well at this point. Basically my scales I haven't used for a year and the battery died about a minute into turning it on. So when I was trying to measure out the 2 to 1 ratio, the scales turned off and wouldn't turn on again. So I had to eyeball the 2 to 1 ratio, but luckily it seems the XTC 3D is quite forgiving in its mix. You don't need to be exactly perfect with the 2 to 1 and it worked just fine for me. So that's something to keep in mind. You don't need to be too hypercritical on getting these two mixes perfect. It seemed to work quite good for me. And of course the next step is to stir it thoroughly to make sure the two parts are mixed very well together and start painting your model. So there's not really any one way to paint the model. You need to make sure you're not putting on layers too thick but also not too thin. Uh, that's often a common mistake people make with the XTC 3D. They'll put on too thin a layer and wonder why the lines are still there. You need to let it do its thing. You need to give it enough substance that as it sets, it can sort of pull out and average out those lines to smooth the print. However, having said that, it will still continue to run for a very long time before it sets. So what I found after doing this initial print is that it will pull at the bottom of it. So 
you know, sort of maybe 10 or 20 minutes later, go back and reposition the part because there'll be a big pool of XTC 3D underneath it. And if you don't reposition it, it's going to set there. So my uh, little dinosaur head did have it sort of set on the bottom of it. But when I came to do the death claw, I gave, I gave the death claw two coats, by the way, because I ran out the first time. So when I came to do the death claw and put it down for drying, I made sure to reposition it so it wouldn't have a pool of set XTC 3D at the bottom of his feet. Overall, painting the death claw was pretty easy. It's a bit hard to get into some places, but I thought it went pretty well. All right, so as you can tell, a couple of things went wrong and I wanted to make sure that I put it out there that yes, I make mistakes all the time and it's the only way you can really learn. So first of all, my little bottle of, uh, bottle of acetone had impurities in it, which then made the plastic go white. And I should have checked this before just going ahead and putting it on the plastic print because I put all the effort into the print itself, but oh well, went ahead and did that. Second of all, I didn't check the paint can close enough to make sure it was actually gray, not um, zinc coat. So again, um, totally my fault. So I sort of got annoyed and then went ahead with the primer, as you saw. So this is just spray putty primer. And then I went ahead with the XTC 3D. So the overall model actually looks really, really cool. I'm really happy with how the XTC 3D smooths out lines and imperfections. You can't really see any layers anymore, especially in most areas. Although you can still see the join lines. And that's not because you can feel them. You can't actually feel them. It's because the color difference of the, the um, yellow on the black. So I'm going to open it up to you guys. How do you think I should paint this guy? Should I paint him black again? Or should I paint him a different color? I don't really have the skill to do a full rendered death claw. Although if anyone is in Perth who would like to have a crack at it, please let me know. I'd love to see this fully rendered, but I don't personally have the skill. I work well with computers and 3D printers, not well with my hands and a tiny brush. But anyway, the actual dinosaur head turned out awesomely. And as you can see, there's a bit of pooling around the bottom. Um, I did mention that you want to make sure you're moving the print after about 10 or 20 minutes so that pooling doesn't set on the bottom of your print. And also the dripping is a big issue with XTC 3D. So I tried to minimize it, but there is still dripping in some areas, you know, along the edge of the horn here and sort of underside areas, which I missed, unfortunately. Not a massive deal, but something to keep in mind that once this sets, it's rock hard. This coating is, you know, absolutely hard now. And to get those trips off now, I'd have to literally sand them off. So it's best to do it while it's still wet. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I certainly enjoyed making this guy and he's gonna become one of my new big mascots in the uh, Maker's Muse set, if you like. And if you did enjoy this video and you enjoy my content, please consider subscribing. It does help me out quite a lot. And I'm really trying to get Maker's Muse up there as one of the big 3D printing channels on YouTube. And I can only do that with your help. Also along the lines of what color you might want me to finish this death chlorine, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you actually do end up ripping any files and printing them, let me know what they what they turn out like. Show me a picture. I think it's absolutely awesome that you guys actually take these tutorials on board and give it a go, because that's what learning is all about. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Bye.